Oi, oi. It is very, very close to being the Grand National Meeting. It is the 1st of April. It's gone past midday, so you will all understand that what I'm saying here is not a joke, even though I'm sure some of you probably think it is on occasions. Um, basically, this is a bit of an update for what's coming up in terms of content in the next couple of weeks. Um, plenty of you are newish to the channel from the All My Bets video from Cheltenham. So I just want to reiterate that I will be doing All My Bets videos for the three days of Aintree. Thursday, Friday, and of course, encompassing the Grand National Day itself. Um, I've done a bit of work on some stats and trends and things. I did that for the Cheltenham Festival. Um, and, I, and I do get right that they're useful to an extent. They don't always necessarily point us to the winner, but sometimes they do give us some telling facts um, and things to look at. So they are like, I would imagine, I would say, probably like the seasoning to a dinner that you're cooking. They are not the vital ingredient to all extents and purposes. Like if you cook it properly in the first place, it will taste pretty good. But if you do need that little bit where you're thinking, oh, it's just missing a little bit of something, then sometimes these can help out. So there is a link in the description for a Grand National specific cheat sheet. And I'm going to quickly run through some of those bits there because this video is going to be all about the Grand National itself. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you are subscribed so you can keep up to date with all that upcoming content. Make sure you like the video because why not? It's nice. And if you really want to get the triple crown, then make sure you drop a comment saying whatever you like. Happy Easter. That would be a good one, right? Um, but in terms of the content that's coming up, like I said, this video is going to be specific to the Grand National. So maybe help you, maybe won't. Um, I mean, obviously, it's hopefully going to help, right? I'm going to do something with Jamie probably, I think, next Monday. So it is Monday the 1st as of the 8th, which is the week of there. When we've got all the entries for the three days, Jamie and I will do a live preview. I think we'll do it live and we will tell you our thoughts on the three days worth of racing. And then, as I say, I will be telling you all my bets for each of the three days so we can see where we're going. You can see where my money's going to. Um, I will be providing some better cheat sheets. I say better. The, the Grand National one's decent in its own right. But I'll be providing some other cheat sheets, probably the better way to say it for the three days of Aintree. So to tell you what to look at, maybe horses that have run at Cheltenham, maybe horses that skip Cheltenham, what their records are. Again, just a few little sighters and pointers. And sometimes it helps with reading the market. So you might be able to work out who's going to be supported based off the back of a trend. You may see a horse that's being backed and think, I don't understand and form why it is. And you may again go and look at the trends and think, ah, it ticks the boxes. That's probably why it's going in. So, you know, you can manage that FOMO and not have to just steam in on everything. So let's go, let's go in with this, right? As I say, um, plenty of content coming out for the um, Aintree Grand National staff. Really appreciate your guys' support. It looks like it's going to be a pretty good meeting this year, so hopefully we'll find some good bets in there. Now, the Grand National itself is very much, in my eyes, a tricky betting heat. We do have uh, Karat Rambler that's coming in here as a very impressive reigning champion and a good run in the Gold Cup, but he's quite fondly found at the front of the market, right? And I know we'll look back to when Tiger Roll started his runs of getting grand national wins you would feel like a bit of an idiot after when they bolt up to think why haven't i just smashed this horse why am i looking for value elsewhere and karach may be in that mold for a lot of people what i will just say is he has been there and done it right so lots of horses that run in a national ideally you'll see when i talk about this trend stuff you ideally want a horse that's having its first start in a grand national unless they have won the race um, that worked true for Tiger Roll in the last sort of 10 years. He came back and won, didn't he, after running in there. But all the other winners were sort of first time uppers. Now, Karach is one of those that has got that big box tick that he won a Grand National. And I mean, his chance is there for all to see, right? I do get worried about some of the favourites, though, because like Cloudy Glenn, I think it was a few years ago, was like a stone welling on his season form and then pulled up. And um, he was very ground dependent, to be fair to him. But we know that Karach Rambler stays. And I think basically, if you're trying to look for a horse to win this year's Grand National, I will talk about these trends and stats and tell you what the shortlist comes out of for those, because I think there's a couple of bits of interest in uh, food for thought in there. Lots of food references. You can tell I haven't eaten yet today, right? Um but yes, yeah, so I think I think the good thing about someone like a Cratch Rambler that is ahead of the market, and especially if you're new into betting or you're new into looking at the Grand National, almost look at why he's the price that he is, right? And you can start looking at his credentials. You can think, bloody yeah, we ran really well in a Gold Cup, even last season, winning like back-to-back -back Ultimers. Like, there's just lots of things that he's done that make him not only a Grand National winner, but warrant favouritism this time round. There will be other horses in these races, and I'll just think of one off the top of my head, like a, an El Dorado Allen, I think he's in here, that... We like the horse. We've always thought there's a little bit of untapped in there. We don't think they've ever really achieved their peak, but they're not the, the right mould of a Grand National type winner, am I? Obviously, Q El Dorado Allen going and winning a Grand National. But we're going to we're gonna go through some of the stat stuff um, and then we'll see what pops up 
on, on there in terms of selections and, and things like that. And then we will, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go through what we think I think is the best method to looking for for, for betting. Now, I did a video a couple of years ago where Bet365 were doing their, you get half your stake back, so you get the each way, the place part of it back. I don't think they'll be doing that concession again. I didn't do it last year. And obviously with bookmakers, some people can't get on with every single one of them, right? So I would just look at it right there. That you might have a better bet than I have in the Grand National. But like I say, this is probably more of like an interlude or a, an introduction into the fact that there will be some other content. There will be some other bets to be had. Um, but let's just crack on, right? Let's just stop waffling. Trait of the channel, right? So the cheat sheet, as I say, is in the description below. I maybe do a pop up on here or something, but you go click that. You can download a little thing that goes on your phone. It's basically the short list of trends you want to look at, right? Three plus runs this season. First run in the national, unless they've won it, of course. Has run at Aintree or Irish trained. Um, just back on that first run in the national, I would say first run in the national, unless it's won, but also it can't have lost in a grand national. So I know Noble Yates in that ticks that box, but just for clarity on that. They should have had 10 plus career chase starts. Obviously, like some of the horses in recent years haven't had that, like your Noble Yates, that was very, very novicey. 11 stone or less. So weights could change as they're coming out, but I've done it on the, the current situation. And has won this season is another sort of key trend. A few other bits that are well worth considering. Has won a handicap chase, has run inside the last 38 days, which unfortunately has ruined it a little bit for those cross country chase horses because that race wasn't run at Cheltenham. Whether that affects them in terms of fitness or whether it's just a trend buster, who knows? But just take that one with a pinch of salt, but obviously pay attention to it. Has won at three miles or further. Again, we've had a Noble Yates that comes in and that hasn't been run at that distance. But you'd think with the 10 plus career chase starts, winning handicap chases, like that, they, they should have already run there. So a lot will tick that box, I guess. Rated 146 plus. So it is a better class race now. Only 34 runners this year, right? So that doesn't really whittle much down if we're just saying 146 plus. But you can narrow it down a little bit, right? Likely to between 146 and 150. Now, there are some classy horses that have won it outside that. So if you're a very good horse, then you don't need to necessarily be in that band. But again, just for whittling it down and just looking at what's happened in the last 10 years, these have helped find the winner. And aged eight or nine, ideally, right? But Again, we've had winners outside that bracket. Now, the eight-point checklist, right? So there's 11 that look good. Of the 11, right, if you would have ticked, well, I say, I say of the 11, right? Let's just do the easiest way to do it, right? You would have found nine of the last 10 winners if they ticked eight or more of the 11 criteria that I'm putting in here. And six of those, six of those eight winners, uh, sorry, six of those ticked nine or more, right? So there does seem to be eight stronger trends that are more relevant. So I'll talk about those ones first. They've helped find seven of the last eight, provided they check at least seven of those eight boxes. But all 10 of those had ticks at least six, right? So of the eight, right, anything that's ticking seven or eight, you, it would have steered us in the right direction. I appreciate that's lots of numbers, right? So let's weigh it down, right? The, the key eight-point checklist is carrying 11 stone or less. So again, subject to change at final decks. Won this season, at least three runs this season. 10 plus career chase runs. Has won a handicap chase. Ran inside the last 38 days. Again, probably harsh on the cross-country runners. No run in a prior Grand National unless they won and haven't lost. Has raced at Aintree or is Irish trained? So that's a bit of a, I guess, dubious one. But if you're British trained, you should have run at Aintree beforehand if you're going to go there. It doesn't have to necessarily be over the national fences. In most cases, it's not. But that's just a key there. And if you're Irish trained, then you know, we'll forgive you. There's other courses to go race at. The additional trends are that 146 to 150 bracket, aged eight or nine, and one at three mile plus. But those first eight that I mentioned, last 10 winners would have ticked seven of those eight, I think. Or was it nine of the 10? Anyway, lots of them are ticking those big boxes. I'm going to whittle it down. Now, it is 34 runners this year instead of 40. So the short list that I'll provide now, is this is horses that have ticked seven out of the eight and nine plus or more of the 11. And the nature of ticking seven and eight means you're going to get lots of the 11s anyway. But these are going down to 38, which is Kitty's Light, who is one of the selections. Um, we don't know, we don't definitely know who's going to get in. But of the bottom buckets, right, so there's lots of horses further down who will tick a few more boxes, like having one a handicap chase because they're in a lower sphere. The, 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 the highest or lowest number that's in there of the unlikely to get in is Anion and Victors of 47. So I won't even waste our time talking about those ones. I don't think that any of them will get in. But of the, of the ones that could get in, right, of the shortlist, we've got Shambard. Kim Muir winner in the past. Limerick Lays won the Mayor's Chase at Cheltenham this year. Mac Totty, just like questionable stayer. Kitty's Light, kind of like a bit of a plotty horse, I guess. Meeting of the Waters ticks seven out of eight. And Adamantly Chosen ticks seven out of the eight, plus nine or more of the 11. Um, the general overview of the stats I talked about, right, was like I said, there were seven, seven of the last 10 winners were aged eight or nine. Outside of those, there's a two 11-year-old winners in 2013 and 2014. 
and a seven-year-old winner, 2022. Curiously, each of those three, so outside of the normal eight or nine, carried less, 10, 10 stone 10 or less, right? So you, again, the top class horses that have had the old ability, you'd expect them to be carrying less weight if they could be an old horse to go and win this, or a younger horse who would, probably wouldn't have achieved the numbers just yet. Eight of the last 10 winners carried 11 stone or less than. Uh, many clouds and tiger roll were the exceptions, and they were the higher rated ones. You know, I said about that band, they were 150 and 169. So again, the weight relative to the rating, right? So they're kind of hand in hand. The average official rate in the last 10 winners is 148, but all the last eight winners were 146 or higher. I've said that. And six of those eight were between 146 and 150. That's where that little band's come from. Um, the market's seen five of the last six winners priced 14 to one or shorter with two favourites and a 10 to one second favourite victorious in the same period. Um, it's also seen a couple of favourites pulled up in that time. So you look at that in whichever way you want to. Does that mean that we've now got a handle on the race and that it's not as easy not as hard as it used to be to find the winner and stay towards the head of the market? Or does it mean that we're due something at a bigger price? Piece that however you want. But again, Karat's Rambler's chances there for all to see. And when you look at those couple of favourites, the one that I mentioned that was like a stone in that did pull up, you don't think Karat's Rambler's going to pull up unless something goes amiss, which of course we'd never expect to happen or hope to happen. Um, eight of the last 10 winners had already won this season. And that's true of all of the last six winners. All 10 had at least three runs under their belt this term. And six were last seen running at the Cheltenham Festival. Three of those actually won there. Eight of the last 10 had at least 10 career chase starts, but the last two didn't. Um, they had seven and nine respectively. Seven of the last 10 had won over at least three miles previously, and eight of the last 10 had won a handicap chase. Six of those eight had won two or three. That's handicap chases. Um, and then the average number of days talked about the last 10 winners is 38. Eight of the last 10 run inside those 38. It was one for Arthur in 2017, had 84 days. Manella Times had 62 days. There were the exceptions. Um, I feel like Manella Times could have run at Cheltenham as well. I know he didn't, and that's the cross-country line that goes in there. So see it what it is. And then we obviously know about Tiger Roll with his previousness, right? So I feel like that's... The, the summary of all of those bits and pieces in there, whether they're any use or not to whittle it down on, it is, I don't want to say irrelevant, but of the ones that I did whittle it down, I'll just say my thoughts on each of those. So Shambard is a 12 year old. Uh, you have to go back to 2004 and Amberley House for the last one of that age. Although that is the only box of the 11 that Shambard doesn't tick, it's just age. He is currently priced at 100 to one. And the slower ground that is currently about, and I think is going to stay, will be suitable to him. Obviously, at the moment, I say obviously, but at the moment, it's about a fifth of the odds, five places. On the day, you might get bigger, but with 34 runners, I don't know how big the concessions are going to be. 100 to 1 about Shambard. I cannot not mention him, can I? He ticks so many boxes. From a trends perspective, I guess he'd be worth a quid, wouldn't he? Kitty's like just missed out on the trends for not having won this season, but did end last season with a win, which looks to be part of the reason why he's been kept out of the limelight to keep his official rating where he should be. That helps him sneak in. Um, but he's potentially well treated as well as just sneaking him. 16 to 1, that reflects the profile more than current form. Uh, you do want some of the numbers on your side for these trends. So Kitty's Light does fit that mould. He's being nibbled as well. 16 to 1 top price at the time of recording. He is shorter than that. Um, he's one towards the head of the market that I guess would look like, you know, when I talk about that profile of a horse, of like Karat Rambler and the Tigers that won in the past. Kitty's Light fits that mould more than anything else, which is why I suspect he's been supported. Mac Totty's an 11 year old, so missed out on the age bracket. Although he hasn't won at three miles plus either, but he did win at two miles seven and a half, so he's pretty close. Um, it, it would have been right up there with Shambhal and Kitty's likely to tick that box. The three runners who hadn't won at three mile plus were age seven, eight, and nine. So 100 to 1 Mac Totty is attractive. He is missing the stamina argument. He doesn't have age on his sides to sort of reverse that. It is going to be testing ground. So I do think you want a stamina laden horse, but hundreds. Do you want to have 50p on him, 25p to get a couple of quid back? Who knows? But I, I want to mention him. Now, the other few that I've mentioned, right, are seven-year-olds. So other than Noble Yates, the last seven-year-old won this in 1940. So whether this is just a change in profile of the race, I don't know. But Meat of the Waters was bought by JP for a Grand National. I think he was about 14 to 1 uh, when I was looking at this last. He's priced basically on the fact that he's been bought for a Grand National more than what he's actually done. So he's probably short enough. But again, got to mention him. Limit Relace only missed out by age um, and not having one at three miles. But she was second to Coco Beach, wasn't she? Stand on the line. Um, holds a chance. 25 to 1 seems about fair. Whether she runs or not, I don't know. But I'd imagine she would be a shortener if she did. Adam only chosen. Hasn't won a handicap chase before now and doesn't tick the age bucket. He is a 33 to 1 shot for what I've said those things. I, my biggest reservation about him is how rubbish he has run in handicap chases. Like his form 
reads terribly. So as much as these will whittle it down for me a little bit, I still want a little bit of substance behind them. Um, I guess the best thing to do now, because obviously this has been a long enough video anyway, right, um, is sort of just quickly summarize some of the horses that, that, that I haven't mentioned because of the trends, but give you like, a, I guess, a form type feeling on this. So we talked about Karach Ramble. Again, chances all, for all to see there. It's only so short a grand national favorite can get, right? So yeah, leave him and you don't need to do anything about him now. I am Maximus is being nibbled. Um, horse with like a gangly action. Ever since he's gone to JP McManus, uh, sorry, ever since he's gone to Willie Mullins, seems to have got a lot more out of him, hasn't he? He won the Drimble early this season. Um, and then he's been tried in real good company. Last one where he smashed Vanillier looks quite good. So like, again, he's got like an obvious likable type profile, but doesn't tick enough of the boxes to be right up there. He's a single figure price, right? You can see him being popular, but yeah. Not so sold. Vanillier that I have just mentioned, big, big run in the race last year. Last run would have definitely been a prep run again. Chart is obvious to see, but me running the national before me, I don't want it. Panda Boy, I don't don't really like the horse. Um, I do think he's a good horse. I think he, obviously I would like to own him, but I don't think he's got the, the ability to go and win this particular race. Now, he's interesting because he's right down the bottom of the weights for this particular interest right but he's been dipping about between hurdles and fences now if you look at his running where he's behind meeting of the waters then i mean it looks quite good and it does look like if he was to stay further or if he was to run further he would prefer it but then when he ran behind iron maximus when iron maximus won the irish grand national he didn't look like a horse that really wanted to stay so I'm a mixed bag about him. It'd be the horse that would like, not ruin me, but would annoy me if people fancied him and he went and won it because I can't see the strong case to make for him, especially at 14s. But it is what it is. Keys, like we talked about, I think, yeah, genuinely worth a bet at the prize. 16s, I think there's a bit of 14s still about, so I'd get, get him on side. Marla Mission as well. Now, John McConnell, I know he's a bit of a, I guess, Marmite type trainer. People have different views of what he's capable of doing. But I thought that running the Hennessy was real decent. I thought he's running the National Hunt Chase last season was real decent as well. Again, he's about 16 to 1, but he's the type of horse that if he won a Grand National, I think a lot of people wouldn't be able to begrudge him. And of course, there will be extra places up for grabs. So I think he's got a bit of squeak, a bit of a squeak. We've mentioned meeting in the waters and I agree that I think he's got a bit of a squeak, but like, yeah, 14, 16s priced on reputation more than anything else but who knows you don't want to knock back the winner just because you think the price is i don't know about right do you that's not i guess enough of a reason um and i guess are the ones that are like a bit further down there isn't anything at massive prices that really lures me in or draws me in i will i will just say that nasa if the ground comes real bad he ticked loads of boxes he was right up there um with a bit of a chance the goffer actually ticked loads of boxes um was just shy of making the shortlist as well he's a 66 to one poker a lot of people obviously backed him at Cheltenham stamina questions you might ask but yeah I just wanted to give him a little bit of a mention um that's, and that's probably it right we probably can leave it there so yes this is um the Grand National, right? Probably one of the hardest races to pick a winner in, but I know there'll be lots of people with stronger opinions than I've got in there. Hopefully some of those shortlisty stuff does help out with it. As I say, I will be putting out some more content specifically for Cheltenham, uh, sorry, specifically for Aintree. That'll always be Cheltenham content. But um, yeah, just make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I appreciate you doing that. So thank you. Um, like the video if you can, drop a comment below and we will see you all probably next Monday.